Hi, it's Carol. Welcome to The Rhythm of Life. I have two readings this morning and the first one is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 to 4 and 9 to 15. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat round pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. <clears throat> Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. And then from John chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 24. And just prior to this reading, Jesus has fed the 5,000 plus women and children with a small packed lunch provided by a young boy, a lunch of five loaves and two fish. Jesus and the disciples have travelled to Capernaum and crowds have followed. Once the crowd realised that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I wonder, in what way do you feel today's reading holds meaning for us today in our daily lives? Can we relate? Do we sometimes come to God or to Jesus a little bit like a McDonald's drive through we come and request our wants, our desires, our needs, and then think, well, we live a good life and we expect to get what we ask for. And then we perhaps move on and forget. Do we complain or doubt when we feel God doesn't answer our question, our requests, 
or it feels like he's abandoned us. In the Old Testament reading for today, God's provision for the Israelites in the wilderness is explained. Now, God had rescued them from slavery in Egypt. He had protected them from the plagues he brought on the Egyptians. He told them how to perfect protect their firstborn. He parted the Red Sea and brought them safely out of Egypt. And yet here they are complaining. At least when we were in slavery, we were fed and safe. You brought us out into the wilderness to die. Yes, they were faced with risk and with uncertainty, but they had their freedom. And when God heard their complaining, he provided yet again manna and meat and protection and reassurance of his presence with a cloud, a, a pillar of cloud by day and a fire at night. Are we scared of risk as God's church? Would we rather remain as we are where we feel safe and comfortable? And yet taking the risk of trying something different, something new, can bring untold blessing and growth, moving out of our comfort zone. The Jewish people recounted and still recount to each generation every year what God had and has done for them. How he'd saved them from slavery and led them and provided for them in the wilderness. And yet here they are in today's reading, knowing all that, coming to Jesus, asking again for the food that perishes. Did you notice in the reading from Exodus that God provided enough food for what they needed for the day, no more? And he says to, that that was to see if they would follow his instructions. It was God's way of keeping them focused on him, making sure that they walked closely with him. In the prayer that Jesus gave us, the Lord's Prayer, we pray, give us this day our daily bread. We pray God's blessing on us for that day, for what we need. Also though, are we praying for what we need for today, not just food for the body, but what we need for the day in every way? I'd like you to pause for a moment and just ponder on a few questions. What do you feel is essential daily bread for the day? Which sort of bread, which sort of sustenance do we depend on to help us in the rough times and the tough times? And what do we truly hunger for and seek? The bread we need, the sustenance if you like, isn't the same every day. Life changes. Life changes in an instant sometimes. But our God knows what we need and he will meet those needs. Not the wants, but the needs. And often in new and in very specific ways in response to what we require. When we open our Bibles and read a passage that we've read or heard so many times before, I'm sure you've experienced it. God can open our eyes and our ears to hear and to see it in a completely new way. Or God may speak through the words or the actions of a friend or stranger. However he does it, he feeds us. He feeds our souls with just what we need at the right time. I don't know though, do we sometimes find ourselves saying to Jesus, where were you when I needed you? Sometimes it's only in retrospect when we look back that we realise that he was right there all the time. Placing our trust in Jesus in those times of trial and trouble, of loneliness and grief, 
we can find that Jesus is the bread that fulfills all the hunger and the thirst of our souls, the balm for our pain and the light in our darkness. Throughout the Bible, we hear of God seeking us out, wanting to restore the earth and our relationship back to how he intended and wants it to be. He loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to teach that and to show it in his sacrifice for you and me on the cross, to reconcile us to God. So what does God require of us? Well, Jesus tells us here, simply to believe in the one God sent, Jesus, his son, to believe what he taught, to believe what he did, to believe who he is. The rest follows. We don't have to strive and work to earn God's love or approval. And maybe that gives us the okay to ease off, to lay down something that is burdening us, rather than being life-giving and bringing us joy. Now, our Minister Karen might not want to hear that though as there's still work to be done and many hands do lift the burden from the few. But anything we do in God's name should be life-giving. God provides for us through Jesus if we believe in him, if we trust in him, if we step out in faith, he will provide the backup putting God at the centre of our lives, of all we do, offering ourselves just as we are. We can and will be led and fed by the one who brings eternal life, who then sends us out. In the words of Micah, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Amen.